Hello everyone and welcome to Switch Up. In today's video I'm going to be showcasing 10 of the games that I've bought for the Nintendo Switch over the last 3 months or so, all in physical form, and I've got quite a range of titles here ranging from first party games, to some imports, to some quite obscure ones too. Now as always with this series I won't just show you the cases, I'm going to give you a mini review of the games of sorts, or at least my initial impressions depending on how much of them I've played so far. But I will also be telling you about any patches or updates that you need to download separate from the cart because if you are anything like me I like to buy the game and know it's all on the cartridge and if it isn't I want to know how much of my system storage I'm going to have to use up. Ok with all that said let's get started. The first game I'm going to talk about then is actually the most recent one I've picked up, this is Two Points Hospital. Now I did have this game digitally and I think it was about 2 or 3 gigs in digital form, but I picked up the physical version the other day and deleted the digital one, although there is an update available not on the physical cart that comes to 532 megabytes. Now the game when it first came out and I reviewed it, a link to that review will be in the top in comment, didn't have a sandbox mode, it was just mission based, although there was the promise of this arriving soon and this update I'm assuming is exactly that because there is now a sandbox mode in the game. The cartridge does come with two expansions included though being Bigfoot and Pebbly Island. The game itself is fantastic fun, if you ever played Theme Hospital back in the day you'll know exactly what you're in for, it's very similar, it has some of the same people behind it, and sees you having to build various hospitals, dealing with certain quite humorous diseases as you go. It plays from the same isometric viewpoint, has the Tannoy announcements that were quite funny from the first game, albeit obviously different lines, and also has a hospital DJ which is quite funny too. This is one of the best construction management simulators on the Switch and is most definitely worth picking up and you can find it quite cheap these days physically. On Two Point Radio. Forget all the nonsense you've heard so far. I am Nigel Bickleworth and I am here to restore civility to Two Point Radio. The next game then is a game called Bee Simulator, now this was a game I wanted for quite a while but I just knew it wasn't going to be great and I didn't want to spend the money on it, well between these last few months it's actually been my birthday so I got this as a present from my in-laws. Now in this game you take on the role of a worker bee as you go about collecting pollen and completing certain missions to aid your hive and to progress the story. This one does have an update available for 732 megabytes. Now I remember watching a video about this game when it first came out and they reported just how loose the controls felt and a few graphical issues as well and whilst the game most certainly isn't perfect don't get me wrong I didn't really find any issues in that regard so I'm assuming that's what this patch has fixed. Objectively it's not a great game but I really enjoyed the premise and just like to find games that are quite different. The speed of the B was quite slow which could lead to the game feeling tedious at times, albeit you could pick up power ups to speed up a bit, and it's not very long at all, I think it takes about 4 hours to finish, but these days that's fine for me, I played this one when I took my daughter to her swimming lessons before the lockdown, so for the half an hour she was in the pool I just play a little bit of this each week, so it still took me a good couple of months to finish. Oh dear, this is the amusement park. I, I didn't mean to disobey orders. And next I'm sure one that many people already own, this is Animal Crossing New Horizons. I was a big fan of the 3DS version of this game, New Leaf, I put a good few hours into that one, and this one was quite hard to come by when it first came out physically, because I think the first lockdown had just started, and other things came up in the meantime and I never got round to picking it up. In the end I ended up picking this up a couple of weeks ago, I was in Smith's Toy Store, the day before the second national lockdown over here in England, and they had a deal going where you could get £6 off any purchase over £15, so this was £40 in there, I picked it up so I got it for about £34. I named my island Summer Isle in reference to one of my favourite films, The Wicker Man. I'm talking about the original with Christopher Lee and Edward Woodward, not the ridiculous remake with um, Nicolas Cage in, dear me. I'm about 10 hours in so far, I've built the museum and I've built the first little general store that you can build, and I've spent a lot of that time digging up the fossils, I got quite obsessed with finding all of those. Now one of our viewers, Paul Mool Dip, left a comment on the video the other day asking if I played this game as he had a Spurs shirt custom design, the kit worn by my football team Tottenham Hotspur. He said his other half had made it for him and he very kindly put the code 
in that comment for me to use too. Now I haven't unlocked the Able Sisters shop yet, I'm assuming that's what you have to do to do the custom designs, but as soon as I do mate I will most certainly be using that, thank you very much, it was much appreciated. Mabel has just turned up and she's got a stall out in the open so I'm assuming it won't be too long now, and I will put a picture of it on our community page as soon as I'm able to. When you buy this game physically, it does have an update available to you. It comes to 682 megabytes. That update would have brought you up to version 1.5.1 of the game. There has since been another small update in the game in line with the changing seasons, and that brings it as far as I can remember up to 1.6.0, I think it was. And here we have the first of three birthday presents from my wife for me, as I said my birthday was a couple of months back. This is the Samurai Showdown Neo Geo Collection. This is a game I couldn't wait for, I'd been so tempted to buy the Samurai Showdown games via the hamster releases on the eShop, I think they're about £6 a pop, but I had heard a whisper that there was a physical release coming, so I was waiting for that. Then it looked as if the only one you could get was a limited release, which to be fair looked lovely, it had like a clamshell Neo Geo design. But I just wanted this one to play the games, I wasn't overly bothered about having something that extravagant. Some games like Link's Awakening I absolutely wanted the collector's edition, others I just want the games. So I was delighted when it came to pass that this was getting a standard release too. The game includes Samurai Showdown 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5, plus 5 Special and 5 Perfect. They all come with online modes and you have a museum mode which includes concepts, art, a variety of documents and images which I love, I love things like that. It also has a music player featuring over 200 tracks. The second of the birthday presents then, this is the Atari Flashback Classics Collection. Again, this is a game I wanted for quite a while, but it didn't actually get a physical release over here in the UK. This is a US import. This was going on Amazon.co.uk, free postage with all import fees included in the price, so it was actually a very good deal. Now, I was a bit apprehensive at first because although I do love the Atari, I had a 2600 as a kid. This is a collection of Atari games, not games on the Atari, so a lot of the classics made by other companies, such as Activision for example, aren't included on here. But having said that, it has more than enough of the games that I love to keep me going. I've spent enough time already just on Asteroids to justify the price. It also has Dodgem, a game that I played a lot as a kid, as well as other classics such as Missile Command, Centipede and Tempest. It includes games from the 2600, the 5200 and also some arcade games as well, although most of my time so far has been spent on the 2600 collection. I suppose wanting games like this starts to really show your age, but I just love the pick up and play nature of games such as these, and some of them have aged surprisingly well, some of them haven't obviously, but Asteroids in particular plays just as well today as it ever did. The third and final of the birthday presents from the wife, this is Zyvaria Delta. This again was from Amazon and again is a US import, but if you are based in the UK it is sometimes worth checking Amazon if you want to get imported games. Whilst their general prices do seem to be a bit higher these days than some other websites, they do occasionally list games from other regions that you can get with the import fees already included. Not always, but when that is the case they work out quite a bit cheaper. This is a vertical shoot em up a bullet hell, a subgenre I don't usually play, but I was attracted to this one because of the mechanics. First of all you have the buzz system, where if you graze enemy fire on the sides of your ship it's only the centre that will get you killed, you will level up and as you level up your ship will evolve. And it also has something called, I think it's called the rolling system, where you press L or R to get your ship rolling it starts to spin and I think I'm right in saying it's harder to control this way but you are more powerful and that's how you'll get those high scores. I'm not good enough at the game yet to really notice, but I think that's how it works. This comes with everything on the cart, there's no update needed at all, and is available to play in vertical mode or Tate or Tate mode as it's officially said, so if you have a flip grip this game is ideal for that. The other thing it does is it includes all of the mechanics from two Zyvaria games, Medium Unit and Revision, and you can kind of pick and choose which parts you like as you play. This is a very good game actually, it's not one I ever played back in the day but I always like a good shoot em up and I've been enjoying this one so far.
And the next one is actually quite obscure. I'd never even heard of it. I found it months ago now on Amazon. This is Farlap Horse Racing Challenge. Now the first thing that appealed to me was the fact it was so obscure. I do love finding obscure games. But the second thing is it's actually a simulation in terms of having a stables, having to breed the horses, upgrade your facilities before actually partaking in the races yourself, winning them and unlocking new courses. Now it's the sort of game where I couldn't ever recommend this to anyone. It's so niche, but I really enjoy it. It is very basic. It's just a case of winning a race, going back to your stables, now having the prize money to upgrade one thing, or train your horse in a particular aspect such as stamina, which will then make the next race slightly easier. But for me, in my collection, it's all about variety, and any game like this that I find, as long as it's half decent and not too expensive, I'll always pick them up. The hour, but it's classic covered. Central Clash in second place, just behind, it's Coffin Capsule. As they straighten for home, it's Coffin Capsule. Central Clash in second spot. Next, a game I picked up for dirt cheap on a website called thegamecollection.net. This is Aces of the Luftwaffe Squadron. This is a vertical shoot 'em up which was on sale for like £6.95 and I actually found out about it via a video I watched on somebody else's pickups. Another Englishman as it happens, albeit he's a northerner, he's from up in Yorkshire I think, and the channel is called Griffo's Retro Gaming. I'll stick a link to his channel or that particular video if I can find it in the description. Now it does have quite a big update, albeit it is optional, of about 2one gigabytes, which is more, I'll be honest, than I would have expected the whole game to equate to. That being said, it is still quite a fun game. You play as part of a squadron, as the title would imply, and the gameplay quirk is that each of your squad members has a particular tick or something that happens to them that you then have to deal with throughout the level. So for example, one person just enters rage mode and goes crazy, and they will start bashing around and could potentially hit you as well as the enemies, so you need to avoid them until they calm down. It's quite an interesting mechanic and it spices the gameplay up, and it is quite a difficult game as well. I don't think thegamecollection.net goes overseas, but if you are in the UK, they are a fantastic website. I've used them many times, and you can get a good few games on there for about six, seven quid. Definitely worth checking out if you want to build a Switch collection. Whoa. And another game I picked up was Power Rangers Battle for the Grid. Now I'm not a Power Rangers fan at all, I was a bit too old for that craze when it came in back in the 90s, but I do really enjoy a good fighting game and this one is quite good. It was a game that I wanted when it first came out, but it was only available via limited run back then, and importing from them over here with the import fees and whatnot is just a bit too expensive for a game that I liked, but I had no real attachment to. Thankfully it then got a standard release elsewhere, which always surprises me. I don't know why that happens with limited run games. It's happened a few times with other releases too, but for me that was the time to pick it up anyway. This one does have an update of about 1.1 gigabytes, and I think I'm right in saying when this first released it was quite bare bones, and they've added a few characters to it since then, as well as doing a few season passes. This physical release includes the Season Pass 1, as well as a download code in the box for a character called Lauren Sheba, am I saying that right? Who I think is actually from Season Pass 3, having just looked on the eShop. It includes a story mode as well as a classic arcade mode and you can play online too. And whilst the characters do feel quite heavy, it's taking some getting used to for me, I am enjoying it. And rather than winning rounds as you usually do in a fighting game, it uses the King of Fighters model of having three characters per team. It cost about £20, maybe just over, and it's well worth it for that, especially, obviously, if you are a fan of the franchise. And the final game for the month then, this is Pikmin 3 Deluxe. Now we actually got a code from Nintendo for this game for the review. The review, again, the link will be in that top pin comment. But Pikmin 3 is one of my wife's favourite games, as well as mine. And when the code came in, <laughs> she kind of said to me, well, how am I supposed to play it then? As she has her own Switch Lite. So we ended up having to buy it physically as well. Not that I'm complaining, any game that comes out that I really like, whether we got a review code or not, I will always buy physically if it's available. This game doesn't require an update or anything at all. Everything is on the cartridge, which is great. It has the main campaign as well as some side missions and the DLC that was available for the Wii U release now comes as standard. That is the mission mode and the bingo battle. This is selling for £50 on the eShop 
which was my biggest gripe with the game as much as I love it but I picked this one up for about £40 just over I think which for me is much more palatable. It came with some stickers as well as a microfiber cloth although it does commit the cardinal sin for me of them not fitting in the case that always bugs me. So there you have it, 10 pickups over the last few months, boosted greatly by the fact it was my birthday. What do you think of these games? I know there are a few obscure ones in there that will not be to everyone's tastes, but as I said, I do love having games like that in my collection, and to be fair, I enjoyed every game I bought. I'll be doing another one of these videos much closer together than they usually are, because I have picked a few more games up in that time, but also we've been sent a few bits, but due to the lockdown I've only just recently picked them all up, so I'll stick all those in a special episode in a couple of weeks time, so please do keep an eye out for that. Please do let me know of any games you have picked up, I love hearing about games that other people buy, where you got it from, how much it cost, what you thought of it etc. A quick thank you to our patrons as always for your continued support, and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Take care, stay safe, and until next time, happy gaming.